All right, welcome to the second half of chapter 30. This is a video for writelatin.org, and we are going to do the passive voice of the future perfect tense. We're going to cover the formation, its origin and connections, including to the present backward-looking subjunctive, and also go over its paradigms and do some practice. Um, before we start, we need to review what the symbols mean. Of course, the thumb towards you means I, you, he, she, it, we, y'all, they. And then the passives is I am blanked, you are blanked, he, she, it is blanked, we are blanked, y'all are blanked, and they are blanked. All right, formation. So far we've learned these two past system verbs in their actives and passives, but now we're going to add the passive of wokawaro. For all of these, remember the active is the third principal part, and the fourth principal part gives us the passive. So we had sum and eram, now we're going to have ero, which is of course the future of sum. And so wokatis ero will be the passive form of this tense just like wokata sum and wokata eram. There it is. Okay, so comparing it to the perfect. We had wokawi have called, wokawero will have called. And the helper verbs, verbs for that are sum and ero. And they're going to match up with the participle just like this. So wokata ero, I will have called, wokata Eris, you will have called, and so on. The translation, of course, is have been called and will have been called. And remember, of course, that you can only use nominatives when this participle is paired with a form of sum, because only a nominative can be the doer of the action of being. All right, but this is the tense we're interested in. And so let's go through the forms again. The active was wokawero, I will have called. And the passive is wokatus ero, I will have been called. I will have called, you will have called, he will have called, we will have called, y'all will have called, and they will have called. Feminine and neuter. And the translation, of course, is will have been called. And that's about as concise as it can get. Now you noticed I had this orange head here looking backward because this tense is always used relative to the future. It always occurs in the construction, if you will have blanked, then something else will happen. Well, this is very similar to what you may have seen already in the subjunctives video where we learn about what's called the present backward looking subjunctive. And it is symbolized, that is symbolized by this orange head here. Now, maybe you haven't read that yet. It, it, you'll get it in chapter 32, and this is only chapter 30. But um, in case you haven't, then you're going to not want to confuse this very limited tense with what's called the present backward-looking subjunctive, which is very similar, wokawerim. In fact, it is so similar that there is only one out of six forms where it's different in the first person singular. Our form this chapter is ero. I will have heard, but the present backward looking subjunctive will have erim. Will have, shall have, can have, and may have. All four of the subjunctive possibilities. So obviously this that we have in this chapter is much more limited than the general subjunctive stuff over there. So don't get too worried about this because whatever you learn here, you're going to rehash it there and it's going to have more applications then. So, you know, whatever. If you want to get technical about how the two are related, for the future perfect, the main verb is always future. And then the if part is always future perfect. So if you will have caulked, then the boat will float. So will float is the main verb and will have caulked is the future perfect. And notice the future perfect describes an action before the floating. So future perfect is, le is leaning on that future. But if now, if this rigid, if future perfect, then future construction is broken in any way, like for instance, the main verb becomes present, 
then suddenly what will happen in chapter 32 is that this future perfect will suddenly be called the present backward-looking subjunctive, or some people call it the perfect subjunctive, although that's an awful term. And in that case, then, it can be describing things going on at any time, may have, could be in the past, because if the main verb is present, then suddenly the may have has to be even further back into the past. So that's basically what I just said there. So I see that they may have caught the boat sometime in the past by now. Alrighty, so that will, what we'll learn in the future is going to appear like this. Shell of, will of, can of, may have, and all of these are hypotheticals. They don't necessarily occur in real life and reality. They're just an imaginary contingency theoretical thing. And when we use it then, there's something called relative time, which will let these subjunctives move all around, but you don't have to worry about that too much yet. So that's that. Okay, so the origin and connections. Where does this future perfect come from? Of course, we already learned that our second participle, tractatus, perfect passive participle, um, is translated as blanked or having been blanked. And it can be any case number or gender, like tractatorum. But when we pair it with a form of the verb to be, in this case, the future of to be, ero or erit, then suddenly the tractatus must be in the nominative because it's part of a two-word verb construction. And the translation becomes will be having been blanked, which condenses down to just will have been blanked. And that's the opposite of the active troxerit, she will have dragged. So let's try the next one. Tractata can be any case number gender, having been blanked. Tractata erit, she will have been blanked, is the opposite of troxerit. And the next one, tractatum, any case number and gender, dragged or having been dragged becomes will have been dragged when combined with erit. And over here we have two people pulling now, so it's going to be troxerint. All right, so this is one of the few times that you're ever going to see I-N-T in Latin. In the plurals, then, we have tractati, tractati, tractata, having been blanked. So are we going to put est with this? No, it's future perfect. So what are we going to put with it? Are we going to put erit with it? No, it's plural. So what are we going to put with it? Erunt. They will be. They will be having been dragged, or more colloquially, they will have been dragged. All right, so tractati dragged, tractati erunt. They will have been dragged. Opposite of troxerunt. They will have dragged. Will have, will have, will have. Tractate dragged, tractate errunt, will have been dragged, opposite of troxerunt, will have dragged. And tractata errunt, they will have been dragged, opposite of troxerunt, they will have dragged. All right, so paradigms. So now we know all the perfect system. Isn't this wonderful when something finally completes? So will kata serro, will kata sum, and will kata serram. Is such a nice, elegant, perfectly symmetrical, exactly what you would expect system for the passives. We have the pa past of sum, the present of sum, and the future of sum. How nice. And future perfect, perfect and pluperfect. All right, so you tell me what tense and voice this is. Pluperfect passive, right? Yep. Imperfect passive. Perfect active. Present active. Future active. Perfect passive. Future passive, hopefully. Future perfect active. Imperfect active, present passive, pluperfect active, 
And obviously the last one is going to have to be future perfect passive. All right, so stop the video and try the ones on the next slide and then start it again when you're ready to see the answers. All right, so now we're going to try to have you do it. Okay, so these are going to be your answers for the next slide. And um, we have active calling on top and passive being called on the bottom. All righty, so start the thing, stop it somewhere, and we have the they form of the imperfect active. So wokabant. Hopefully that's right. Yes. Try it again, and... Now we have the we form of future perfect active. So, wokawerimus. Yes, very good. And then one more time. Now the u form of the perfect passive would be wokatus s. Very good. Okay. So, stop the video and give this a try, and when you think you can do these rather reliably, then go on and try a third conjugation one on the next slide. Okay, so here is a third conjugation verb. Um, you, we have the actives on the top, drag, and the passives down below, be dragged. And notice that since this is one of the third or fourth conjugation verbs, it has this unusual future form on the far right the A and E roll. Okay. All right, so start it and stop it somewhere, and we have the y'all form of the pluperfect passive, so that would be tracti erratus. Yes, you all were having been dragged. All right, so start it again. This time we've got the I form of the perfect passive, so that's going to be tractus sum. Easy. Alrighty. So give this a try yourself and do it until you feel comfortable. And when you do, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back because you have completed all six tenses in both active and passive voice. Walete.